He big. He's strong. He's... He's bad? He's not a low tier, he's a power bottle. If you're looking for a character to play in Exert, let me tell you why you should pick up the patron saint of smoking backwoods and breaking backs good. I'll need you to complete this dark pact, and in return, you'll be rewarded with touch of death combos on the entire cast, the best command grab in the game, and a set of tools that provide interesting and fun ways to play. Soon, we will set the Potemkin instrumentality project in motion. We will become one, each soul a piece of the greater Potemkin consciousness. Our Lord, who art a grappler, Potemkin be thy name. Give us this day our daily meter, and forgive us our bad verse, as we forgive those who gold burst against us. And lead us not into loser's bracket, but deliver us from Axel. In the name of the Slidehead, the Stun, and the Heavenly Potemkin Buster. <laughs> I just need an initial here, signature here, one pint of your blood, and completion of this acknowledgement form that says this is not a cult. Potemkin has disgusting pressure up close and terrifying mix-ups. His basic game plan is be near, create fear. He does struggle a lot, but his pressure is his saving grace. This is where you condition the opponent. This is where you express yourself. This is playing Potemkin. Neutral is rough going and it's harder to punish people for running away at mid-screen. You have to make the right choices and reads to get in effectively against a competent opponent. In Exert, most of the cast outranges you. Most of them are going to do everything in their power to stay away from you or approach in a situation that's advantageous for them. This is where your basics begin. Each of Potemkin's special moves assists in getting in range to bust all over your opponent. Each of them is a tool that allows you to stay close to those that want to keep themselves out of your loving arms. First up, Insane Clown Posse Mom, it's not a phase, it's a meme. It's also the most important air combo ender you're ever gonna do in this game. This is the best ender for you in terms of corner carry. Break out the TI-84 for that sweet parabola graph and bam, you're in Party City. It's also a meme movement tool sometimes. You can get away with some dumb shit like ICPM YRC, now you're behind them, nothing personal kid. Obviously, don't just let this thing rip unless you're feeling super spicy or you're just gonna troll. This can be used after a successful slide head at the correct spacing for a small combo and good positioning. If you think you can get ICPM off of a conversion, do it. Worst case, you drop it and now you're in a scramble, but the reward for you is too great to pass up. This is everything. This is your main mobility tool. Potemkin's movement is a special subject in its own right. I've dubbed it Potemkinesiology. It is an attack in its own right. It has a hit of armor, so you can let the attack rock to catch out an opponent's poke. It can also be stopped in the middle of the animation by pressing P. This is Hammerfall Break. Use this after getting a knockdown to get in range to run offense. You can also use it to gain space in neutral. More than just that though, you need to be good at canceling normals into Hammerfall Break during your offense, during combos. And overall, it's important to know when you need to have it charged and how long you have to charge it. Hammerfall Break pressure is so much of your offensive gameplay. This chart displays how advantageous or disadvantageous Potemkin's normals are after using Hammerfall Break. As you can see, there's quite a few there that aren't so advantageous. This is where the heart of Hammerfall Break Pressure comes in. Your goal is not to be plus all the time. You can't be. Your goal is to create uncertainty in your opponent and keep them guessing constantly. How much can you get away with? You want to rob your opponent blind, make them think that they're safe, and when they give you an inch, you take a mile. Hammerfall Break makes this character. Now, I'll go ahead and unseal the sacred text for you. This is Hammerfall YRC. By spending 25 meter, you can buy your opponent a one-way ticket onto the Vibe Check Express with a transfer to the Potemkin Bus Tour. Everybody do the flop. A well-timed slide head takes you from full screen misery to good afternoon, my name is Potemkin. Have you accepted Zep as your lord and savior? It has two parts. The first part is a low. It's horrible on block, so it only really comes into place if you use it up close. 
or for a niche setup we'll talk about a little bit later. The most common way for people to get out of this is by backdashing or jumping. It is important to learn to time slide head as well as you can, since you can get punished for spamming this predictably, or if you just do it at the wrong distance, it can get punished on reaction. If your opponent is jumping or backdashing to get away, try to have the slide head hit as soon as they hit the ground. From there, you can play a lot of mind games with them on when and where you're going to use this. After a successful hit, you can do a quick ICPM to do a small combo and be in the perfect distance for a mix-up, or you can do two quick hammer fall breaks to get into range if it's iffy if the ICPM will hit correctly or not. And since ICPM is spacing specific, it's a good thing to learn to do both of them. In the corner, you can also use slide head with meter to do an unblockable setup and absolutely destroy your opponent. All of your projectile are belong to Zep. It takes an enemy projectile and literally makes it yours. Flick makes unplayable matchups like Potemkin versus Leon Maxi, Shaggy and Scooby, the only doctor my health assurance will cover, the zoner that's built like a Pixar mom, burger enjoyer, ball fondler, and the rudest mattress warehouse employee playable. Flick helps you deal with opposing characters' game plans that rely on projectiles. Flick at least gives you some counterplay to fight back against oppressive space control. This is also a great frame trap, especially near the corner, since counter hit Flick, wall splats, and lets you run party time combos. It's also a fantastic poke for similar reasons. I love this move because there's this fun little mini game involved with flicking projectiles. My dream mode for Exert is to just have like Potemkin batting practice where you just get randomized projectiles thrown at you and you just flick them back. It's sort of like the parry mini game in Third Strike. My favorite application of flick is against Jacko, especially if she has a bunch of goobers out because you can flick a house throw and it'll just go in a straight line and wipe out all the goobers like a natural disaster on a village of Smurfs. Dude, Potemkin has to be like the Jacko minions version of Attack on Titan. Megan Fist is kind of weird in this game. It's minus on hit and on block if used forward. It's not really used in any meaningful combo routes. Forward only needs to be respected if it's at tip range or on counter hit. It's kind of this weird mobility tool and you can use it to catch longer range pokes if you're specifically looking for them. Back Mega Fist is good on block, but it's weird to hit at mid screen so you'll mostly see this as like a defensive option in the corner or you just messed up a Potemkin Buster input but don't ever admit to that. This is a hundred percent calculated use of a niche defensive option to build frame advantage. It's over Potemkanikin! I have the high ground! Hey! Shut up! Get, get down from there right now! It's an unblockable anti-air ground with a follow-up, heat extent. It's too slow to use as your main anti-air, more of a combo tool or a hard call-out option for someone trying to get away from being grabbed. Once again, I will unseal the forbidden text for you. Cancel the first part of Heat Knuckle with RC, and you get a route that's truly, truly damaging. Trishula, I'm pretty sure this is just Potemkin sneezing. You know like when you go to touch a fire and the heat's like way actually above where the flame ends? That's how this works. Trishula's vertical hitbox is like almost the entire screen. This is an extremely committal anti-air used to set up an unseeable mix-up primarily in the corner. This is mostly combo fodder. You'll see this used a lot in Potemkin's best combo routes like the 100% stun confirms or every level of corner route for the most part. I'm not allowed to sing in my videos anymore. Nobody let me do this shit. This move will give you a feeling similar to actual drugs. It's the thing that everyone you play is afraid is going to happen. The last thing you think about when you fall asleep and the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning. Every pot buster in this game can be followed up with a safe jump for more pressure. What are you jumping for, man? This is a no-fly zone. Heavenly Potemkin Buster. It's not as flashy as it is in Strive, but it's still as much of a call out. It's a high damaging super that you use to call out jumps, or you'll see it used a lot as a combo ender, either a normal or with burst super. I'll pull out the scrub tech one more time for you. If you wanna do the proxy special, wake up with backdash, immediate 2H, heavenly Potemkin Buster. Doesn't matter if it kills, doesn't matter if you win. The guy sitting next to you is gonna think you're fucking crazy. Giganter Kai, it's a 
big ol' wall. This is invincible from frame one, so you can use it to hard call out gaps in someone's pressure. I don't really recommend that though, because Potemkin Buster's only three frames, and you can just use that instead. You see Gigantrakai used mostly in the corner as part of stun combos. It does so much stun. This is another integral part of Potemkin's touches of death. Gigantic Bullet EX. This is the follow-up to Gigantor. Kind of useless. It doesn't do any additional stun, so really the only time you want to pull this out is if you see that you can kill your opponent with it. If you can't, you're better off just going for the stun route. Infernal Tor. This is Potemkin's instant kill. You take the opponent, you drive them through the earth with your hands, effectively planting them as part of the scrub harvest. This will ensure a bountiful crop for Zep. I mean, it's pretty much the same as any other instant kill in the game. It looks flashy, you land it, they're dead. It inflicts unseeable mental damage on your opponent with it or have it blocked and you lose your meter, like the whole bar, and you don't get it back for the rest of the round. I actually think his instant kill would be cooler if it was like Maze where you wake up in an unfamiliar place and you're blinking your eyes and while you're out of it you just see the heavenly Potemkin bussy falling from the sky at your face. Fucking death by snoo snoo. <laughs> Two other things, his backdash is the best in the game. It's a quick startup and super invincible. Backdash Buster is, honestly, it's an effective tool at every level of play. I know it's like super scrubby, but it's really fun, super satisfying to pull off, and it's a great tool. Potemkin's air throw gives you a great knockdown when you land it. Let's talk about the downside. Now we know he's not the best character in the game. Does this mean it is impossible to succeed with him? No, absolutely not. But it's important for you to understand that you have to work hard for this. There's a few reasons. Firstly, his matchup chart. Potemkin has a bad matchup chart. He struggles against a lot of characters, particularly those that excel at longer ranges or are capable of controlling a lot of space. Potemkin suffers against different characters to differing degrees. The basics of getting in, running your game plan, still your win condition. But you want to get in and never let them get out. Reason number two, you have to play defense and you have to play good defense. You are going to have to hold a lot of shit. There's gonna be feet in your face. You're gonna get shot with literal guns. You're gonna be eating a lot of meaty balls. I have a college degree. Learning when and how to use your defensive options is crucial to playing Potemkin. You need to have strong fundamentals before you can get to the real fun, which is Dementel. The level of defense you have to play, coupled with his trash matchup chart, is a recipe for frustration if you don't approach learning with a healthy mindset. Number three, he's a charge character. His one charge move is the most important tool in the game for him. If you don't like charge characters, then this might be a deal breaker for you. Speaking from experience though, it's not as steep a learning curve as you might think. Always remember the ABCs of playing charge characters. Always be charging. Learning curve aside, the sheer amount of patterns and options you get to run off of Hammerfall Break Pressure is insane. It allows for this level of self-expression that seems completely lacking in a simple character in a game full of crazy bullshit. It helps the wins and losses not really feel like they matter because I'm experiencing something that's beyond results. Play Guilty Gear, play Potemkin. Finally, you need to practice. You need to lab punishes. You need to lab difficult combos. Practice pressure sequences. If you love the grab, you must also learn to love the lab. Potemkin's best and most damaging routes are hard. It takes a lot of practice, repetition, and patience to develop. If you wanna play at low or intermediate level, you don't need to worry about these right away. However, if you want to take this character and play him for all he's worth, then you're gonna have to bite the bullet and eventually grind out the execution. So, you've accepted the contract. What now? There's a reason I don't do full character and tech breakdowns in these videos. And it's because that's not my role to fill. There are so many talented players and creators who do much better jobs at that and have a deeper understanding of that character. My job is just to get you interested. Your job is to look deeper and explore these fantastic creators. This character is just seriously fun. Join us. Become a part of the grappler hive mind. We are all connected. When one Potemkin busts, we all bust. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button, share the video, come hang out in the Glue Eaters Discord, play Potemkin, play Guilty Gear, 
Oh my fucking god, Exer got rollback, baby. Be good to each other, and I'll see you next time.